So welcome to the latest in the Banker Middle East CEO Leadership Series. My name is William Mullally, and I'm here today with the CEO and Vice Chairman of ADS Securities, Philip Ganim. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. So, so tell me, what was the initial vision behind ADS Securities? You were founded in 2010, yep, I believe. Correct. So what were you initially trying to achieve with it, and how has that evolved over the years? I think it was an evolution of, of events that allowed ADS to be created organically. Uh, the main point was the geographical position of Abu Dhabi. The Abu Dhabi Inc. was the initial uh, initiative. Why? Because by being positioned in, in this region, with the investment that the government has put into uh, infrastructure, technology, laws, allows you to develop a financial institution. And um, uh, after the economic crisis, the, the, the world needed an additional price contributor because the UAE pretty much was very dependent on external price contributors, where today ADS is a price contributor. Um, and we established the company. The ambition was to have mainly a brokerage department, a large brokerage, but very focused in technology. And this is why immediately we came up with the technology and distribute, distributed to institutions and then professional clients. With time, due to the help of technology and the commitments of the teams, we established a mobile, mobile application, which is Oryx that we're talking about. And we, f we feel that ADS can be a global partner to all kinds of traders, from institutions to individuals, because people want to get closer to their money, closer to the market. They want, you know, today the only thing that is not streaming yet is your body, okay? The rest is streaming. And uh, where before, by being positioned out of Abu Dhabi, you felt a little bit far from the real economy due to the time zone and the, the geographical position, name it, because you were priced from abroad. Where today, by being positioned in Abu Dhabi, we can allow our, our clients to receive prices because we cover 16 hours of market open. So we open Australasia, UK, Europe, US, Asia, we cover it awake. It means our other offices, which came after, can continue, but automations of our systems allowed us, allow us to distribute massively our prices. Mm. So how do you plan to develop things from here? What are you mainly focused on moving forward? The main focus is how are we going to train clients to understand what are we selling? Mm. And what are we selling? We're selling cheaper prices, transparency, safe technology, safe company, safe regulation. It means that today you want to be able to be, to have a, a, you as a client, to have a broker or financial firm in a rightly regulated environment. Yeah. And this is where we are established. We're in London, we're in, in uh, Abu Dhabi, in Hong Kong. Potentially we're opening other two countries. We have established an office in Switzerland. We have an office in, in Singapore and we're looking to grow. Why we're doing that, to allow clients to feel comfortable, not only they have a strong technology, not only they have strong prices that they can trade, buy and sell, have their account statements, have news, streaming news, anything they need to excel in their trading performance, but also to feel comfortable on the regulation they're trading with and in. So could you tell me more details of the Oryx platform and what that is delivering to clients? Oryx platform comes from an evolution of events in terms of the technology. And the main one that everyone is talking about is artificial intelligence and blockchain. Okay? Today, the, crack, the, the cracking of the atom is artificial intelligence talking to blockchain. And this is where, in our uh, technology, in our back office, if you want, we have uh, introduced blockchain. Uh, artificial intelligence is major for our business because it allows us to enhance not only our CRM systems, uh, enhance our pricing, in enhance the way we, we discuss between the front and back offices internally, the systems. So the platform today is extremely focused on transparency. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's stay on the, the blockchain front while we're here as well. I mean, the story for, for, for blockchain and cryptocurrency, I think, has evolved a lot in the last year. So what are your views on the evolution of that space? Do you feel that um, now that we're focusing less on cryptocurrency, we can focus on the real developments that come you know, from blockchain 
Look, we were the first one to, to, to be in the region selling CFDs and cryptocurrencies, okay? Uh, and plus we won many awards on that subject. Now that you're not seeing the price of Bitcoin going up, it doesn't mean that the coin story is finished. It's only the beginning. Today, markets need more products. And the blockchain side of the technology, of course, it is the first version. It's like phones, it's like computers, etc. It's, it's the first version. But it's going to be the future of the way you do, you're going to do your payments, the way you're going to see at government procedures. Name it. It's going to go very far, very far. Uh, and and the, the days that we're going to see in the next 10 months have nothing to do with the days we've seen before that. Uh, on the other side, the market wants to trade more products. You saw the appetite when the Bitcoin was out and Ethereum and, and uh, forgot the other name of the other co coin. They were all out and everybody was trading it. Mm. This showed a different thing than the interest only in coin, but it showed the interest of people wanting, wanting to trade a new price, a new product. And this is where possibly the cryptocurrency will be across to, uh, will open a new market which could be loyalty points. So you might have a market of loyalty points, which is a, you have so much loyalty points that can be traded, okay? Today ADS is launching its loyalty points. The, the, the faster you join us, the, the, better, the more loyalty points you, you, you will have. You will have a market of loyalty points. Then also you have something that is coming on board which is called climate change. Before you had climate, uh, you had migration of population due to wars. Today you're going to have migration of population due to climate. And climate is going to be a new market, a new tradable market. Carbon, water, name it. This is where you're going to see new kind of products and this is where technology, where it wasn't able before because before you used to trade on the phone or on a terminal, you want it to feel plus or minus that you're trading something that you can catch. Yeah where today people have accepted to trade something they can't catch. You can't catch a Bitcoin. You can't put it in your pocket. Mm. And this is where the topography of our economy is changing. We are accepting to trade digital. Mm. How else does you know, using a trading app and platform change the way that people trade? I mean, in the, the clients that you've spoken to, how has it changed their behaviors? They trade more. Mm. Some of them trade less. Some of them understand really well the markets. You don't have, you know, we're no more in the times of the 2001s and two where everybody was buying, selling, and didn't understand what they were doing. Today, they understand. Uh, they want to have that access. They want to look at their statement regularly. They don't want to talk to you all the time on the phone and hear the mood of the trader. They want to face, it's a very personal thing to trade. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to absorb enough information. You want to have certain level of delegation, which is the platform doing the job for you. Only you need to buy and you need to sell. Yeah. And it, it allows us to increase numbers of clients. And this is why ADS grew organically. We have plenty of clients that trust us. And our duty is to give them the best product. Mm. And, your, and your clients, let's speak more about them, because you yeah. always had a mix of you know, high net worth individual, individual retail investors, um, institutions, institutional investors. So. How do you see that developing over time? Do you see, you know, with these sorts of platforms, you're going to see more private traders and more of a focus from ADS Securities on those sorts of clients? Look, democratization of trading and decentralization will only, only push to have clients moving away from the broker business and wanting to trade directly to the market. You will be a tech provider at the end, mm -hmm. and you will be a settlement. And, and if tomorrow we go more into coins, you will not let, less have custodians more clearers you see clearer on the coin side. So uh, I'm talking in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the future, but today, definitely high net worth individuals are people that are our target market. Yeah, I mean, what Professional do you see? clients. Yes. Yeah. Not only high net worth. What do you see them mainly focused on, the, the, the private clients today versus when you originally began? Do you feel those clients have changed a lot in that time? Do you feel that ADS has kept up with them? Definitely we kept up with them because we're still there and succeeding. Mm -hmm. Now, are they moving from pro one product to another? Still pretty much FX is the winner. Then you have CFDs and equity, which is depending on the geographical region. If you talk about US, US is equity. If you talk Europe, you have more a combination of equity, bonds, 
uh, currency, a combination of all. But what I feel is that there is still a big appetite for new products. So the Bitcoin side or cryptocurrency side is not finished yet. Mm. What do you see the development in those products? I mean, do you see that? Do you see any new trends that are already picking up that people are really yet to really talk about to the same degree that you know the Bitcoin conversation? You know, became? the more you, you you see coins that have a a, a, a value in terms of an underlying asset sort of thing, you know, where you feel that you have a, an underlying asset behind, could be a loyalty point, could be any kind of solid thing that you can possibly access. It will allow you to support your Bitcoin price. Adding to that the big element of the digital and the speculation. So you might have 30% of actually physical, like any trading market today, you trade gold, you don't have as much gold as you actually trade it. Mm. Physical gold. Huh? Uh, currency, same story. We're into the trillion and trillion and trillion. You don't have printed currencies that are equivalent to the amounts that you actually trade on a daily basis. Mm. Same thing for banks. Today, banks have AUMs of trillions or billions. They don't have all of that liquidity into the bank. Mm. But they are traded. Their stocks is traded at the value of the AUMs. But there today, I frankly believe that Clients will continue to trade anything that is liquid. They want liquid products to be able to buy and sell on a streaming environment. Mm. So what growth do you have planned um, for ADS Securities? At what rate do you see that growth and how are you going to achieve that growth? As any organic company, we had our up, down, up again, and now is growth. And the growth, in our opinion, will be very fast at a certain point because we are now in a stable mode where the technology is there, the capital is there, the, the regulative environment is well established for our company, plus the teams are here. So the company is growing year on year faster than the year previously, but I feel that 2019 will be an accelerated, will be much faster in terms of growth cool. due to the numbers of clients that have joined us. You know, they don't join us on a daily basis and satisfied with the product. So I'm not sure how you know, focused you are on you know, the competition out there, but who do you see as your true competitors, maybe not naming names, but in, in what way do you feel that you differentiate yourselves and provide a better value than, than your competitors? We never built ADS looking at competition. We changed things. And this is why we're still there. When we first built ADS, you had all of the names that we don't want to mention, yeah. okay? And they are all very good companies, but they miss something. What is it that they miss? Is the real exposure to the market. The market is a highly volatile business, trading markets. Yeah. And you cannot base yourself saying, oh, today it's liquid. I'm okay, let's take, build more risk but we saw in the Swiss National Bank move when uh, they depegged at 121 was the Euro Swiss. The next price that I saw with my eyes was 0 0.33. So all the automized systems, and if you didn't have traders sitting on the table and understanding that there wasn't a huge bomb in, in Bern or Zurich or, or Switzerland where Switzerland became a, a parking lot, when they understand the methodology of the financial market where you cannot rely on robots only. You have to do a market making intervention. And this is where ADS was able to sustain because of our strong capitalization, because of our understanding of the market. And this is why we passed through that winning or losing, but we went through that movement and we learned from that. Mm. On the, the concept of disruption, I mean, do you view ADS securities as a disruptor? Contributor. Continuation and contributor, because today a financial institution can say, okay, fine, I'll be an additional one to what exists. And I'll move with the trend of what actually exists. We said, no, we're going to try very small, introduce new products, introduce a new idea of doing business in a new financial center, because Abu Dhabi was never a FX financial center. Okay, nor a CFD, nor a cryptocurrency. Maybe today it is, and it will, and it will be. 
But at that time, we were a new comer, a new price producer. What do you so do you, do, you, do you think it's disruptive or do you think it, it is damaging or disturbing? I don't know, maybe, mm. maybe not. Well, what do you see as the, the key effects of having Abu Dhabi come up as you know, a true financial center for the world? How have you seen that develop in the last eight years? How has that changed the landscape? Look, today Abu Dhabi has invested in culture. We have Louvre Museum. Why culture? Culture is the foundation of humanity, the history. And today, finance and trading and money is part of your life, like your health. And it is obliged to establish from the UAE, as the geographical position is so strategic, plus the law, today's centers that will succeed and prevail in the long run are financial centers that are strong, have a strong rule of law, enforcement law, bankruptcy law, employment law. Today, where, when you want to come and work in a financial center, you want, as an employee, to feel comfortable that if you come, you have rights to be an employee. A company wants to feel comfortable that it has rights to inform, enforce or establish contracts that can be defended by courts. You have this in the UAE. This is why it will succeed now and continue to succeed organically because of the rule of law, the positioning on the culture side, the geographical position, the risk analysis of how we protect Abu Dhabi image. This is very important. And the rest by being a price producer from us or other contributors, we're not going to be unique, you know. The opposite, the more we have ADSs like this in Abu Dhabi, the better we are. What do you see, what are your current thoughts actually on the development of the regulatory landscape, both here and around the world as you are, you know, a global institution? You know, to, today, I understand those regu the regulators. I understand the pressure they have. Mm. You have so many s small institutions or big institutions that are exposed to large risk due to new technology. They don't know how to implement it. They don't know how to manage the institutions. And they throw all the risk on the regulator. Go solve it. No, no. Today, there should be a tight discussion between regulators and financial institutions on a real understanding of the needs of the clients, need of the country that regulates you. What risk do they have? What risk appetite can they sustain? Because today, any bankruptcy of an institution, you saw the repercussion on the, let's say you have an, an institution falling out in France, you see the repercussion on the, to on the market overall, if there is negativeness. So regulators have a very tough job, but regulators have to understand that the times of today are not the times of before. Mm. We are in a new world. Technology is the magic around that, and it will only accelerate. Mm. And this is where they have to focus how they will not regulate technology, but understand how technology will allow those companies to grow faster. And the numbers we're seeing, you know, in terms of valuation in the US, doesn't mean that in Europe it won't, we won't have that kind of valuations. Uh, what, is, are, what is your current optimism on the, you know, the landscape for, for, your, for your clients? And how optimistic do you say they are for approaching 2019, 2018, after this very interesting bear market we've had this decade? Look. Today, the clients know what they're doing. We have that feeling. We see them. They're more cautious. They know when to enter, when to go out. So the learning curve is much faster. And will 2019 be a year of, of opportunity? Every year was a year of opportunity. Not 2019, not 2018, not to the, every year. Every day, there's an opportunity. You and me sitting here behind you, the screen, went up 30 pips and went down 30 pips, okay? Someone made money, someone lost money. Mm. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for thank your time. You. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for thank this you. great conversation. Thank you. And best of luck. Thank you very much. You too, you too. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.